Welcome to another edition of Media Watch. I'm your co-host, Eric Tate. I'm Bob Anthony. And I'm Raymond Peterson. And thanks to the services and good graces of Manhattan Neighborhood Network and EVT Educational Productions, we're back in the throes and in the thick of it. And that was one of our cold openings where we decided we would get back to the basics of why there's been NFL kneelings and protests uh, all during this NFL season because we're taping, pre-taping on October 12th. The show will air the following Monday. Uh, but on October 12th, that young man that was just you just saw being beaten was uh, supposed to have a pretrial hearing in the Euclid, Ohio courtroom. And he was having a pretrial hearing because he was being charged with resisting arrest mm -hmm. and various assorted sundry crimes pertaining to that stop. So, um, Now the stop was for what in the first they place? They flagged him because, if I remember correctly, Ray, um, they suspected that the plate might have been operated by someone with a suspended license. Mm -hmm. And so they flagged him down. And basically, we saw what happened when they flagged him down. They asked him to get out of the car, uh, which he did. Mm -hmm. And according to what I read in a report, because that was a Washington Post video that we saw, mm -hmm. I appreciate the fact that it was still online, because when I saw that today, that when we were taping was his arraignment day, I said, I kind of vaguely remember that case. Let me just Google it and see, because they said the video had gone viral on social media, on Facebook. And sure enough, it didn't take long to call it up, and it, the Washington Post's version of the video came up. Uh, and their story basically indicated, and I'll probably quote some of it, that he seemed pretty much to comply. He said, get out, face away from me, ba barely turned, half turned, right. when as the video showed the cop grabbed him and started assaulting him. So. Right. Did you see anything other than him getting out of the car? Because he said, face away from me, and he hadn't even spun. He had half big, half turned. Yeah, right. <laughs> I know. I mean, I, did, did he... Did he try to lunge away, I don't know. I, I, I didn't see that. Right. You know, so it's really hard to say from this angle. I, of course, you know, I'm, I'm thinking that the man did nothing. It's, it's all too common for police to overreact in situations like this. But I just don't know. You really can't tell from that video. It looked like he was complying. It looked like he just barely got out of the car. Right, right. I didn't see anything. Threw him down to the ground. I didn't see any sudden moves. I didn't no, see. No, I didn't either. And I didn't this, is, this is the Washington Post reporter's okay. take. Seconds later, without clear provocation, the officer shoves Hubbard against the car, which we That's saw in the video, exactly grabs him by the arms. Yeah. They tumble into the center of the street, then collapse onto the pavement. A second officer rushes to help his partner. Uh, right. So I didn't see any resisting arrest <laughs> when right. he got out of the car. Well, I you, saw. You, uh, the, <laughs> but, you know, police will use um, resisting arrest when they have no other basis. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's sort it's of e a catch-all. It's, 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 yeah, it's a catch-all, but it's easy to provoke somebody resisting arrest. If I reach for your hand like that and you pull it back, you've resisted arrest. Uh, yeah. You know? Right. <laughs> so, so two things about that. After they get him in handcuffs, mm -hmm. this cop still continues punching him, <laughs> okay? And then the other thing is, according to the story I'm reading, because we didn't see it in the video, they then put her in handcuffs and take her off to jail with him, okay? Really? Well, so, no, well, I have, you right. know, I, I, but she's placed in handcuffs, she goes off to jail with the cops, and, and the driver of the car, who quite, well, might be subject to possible arrest because he's driving with a suspended license. Right, and I right. say subject to possible arrest because sometimes they give you a bench warrant and say, that's your second violation. You show up in court for violating that, whatever. But uh, the, the headline on the Washington Post story actually says it all. An Ohio officer beat a black man during a traffic stop. A town wants to know why. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's based on the video that's right. gone viral. Right. So, I mean, we use that as a cold open because that's a vivid reminder 
of the kinds of police treatment that black and brown people and young people and poor people, because some white people experience the same thing because they're, <laughs> they're poor mm -hmm. <laughs> and they run afoul of the law, uh, and, but predominantly black and brown people, okay? And so this man is being arraigned today, pretrial hearing, whatever that's arraignment or pretrial hearing, whether that means the same right. or not, that's a legal term. But he's the guy who's now having to worry about being tried for resisting arrest mm -hmm. based on that stop. He's not being tried for driving with a suspended license. He's right. being tried for this altercation right. with the police. So this, for me, is the nub of why Colin Kaepernick took his knee, all right? Mm -hmm. This is what he was protesting. And so here we are in October, what, four months after this arrest took place, NFL season started, Kaepernick's protest begins to get a little bit traction, but it doesn't get much, and who jumps into the middle of the fray but your president, right. okay? Yep. Pick up the tail, Ray, because you've got the, the nub on the NFL bylaws. Uh, well, <laughs> you know, as we previously stated, uh, the, uh, their bylaws state that they must be on the field and stand at attention during the uh, national anthem. No, they must be on the field, but should stand, but right? But should, should stand, right. you're right. 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 Yeah, that's, right. That's, that's, that's the language, right. should stand. Yeah. <laughs> and then if they violate any of this, they may be subject. They may be subject to penalties, right. Yes. Right. So, right. But it's up to uh, uh, some type of procedure. It's right. not instant and it's not automatic. Right, right. right. So, so the latest on that development is, of course, the fact that Cowboys owner, Jerry Johnson, that's his name, right? Jones. Jones, Jerry Jones, yeah. He used to have a coach named Johnson. Right. I used to get those two guys exactly. confused. <laughs> right, Johnson was a coach. You're right. right. So Jerry Jones has now decided he's going to mandate that his players better stand or else, right? That's pretty much the, the, the nub of his. Bob, you got you to. You, you well, know, you're the, you're the <laughs> well he, he, he basically sent the message to his organization mm -hmm. uh, that uh, the flag should be respected. But he actually lo didn't, didn't. He locked arms with players yeah. at a previous uh, uh, football game uh, uh, in a, sort of one of these moments of solidarity. Right. Yeah, but and since then he's come out with a statement. Right. Which do, you, do you have anything on the statement that we could? I, I can cue it up. But oh. you're. But I was wondering about that. Uh, he, it seems a little mercurial uh, the way he. Uh, uh, first, I thought he was leaning towards the the players a little bit but now he's going corporate. Oh, he's basically. gone, I'm a Donald Trump supporter. I'm the guy who contributed to Donald Trump's campaign, millions of dollars, and so Donald Trump wants me to make sure these guys aren't on the flag, so he come out with a statement. Now, um, uh, personally, I'm wondering, I'm listening to the football games, some, some of them on Sundays. I know some people are totally boycotting the NFL, but I'm still watching a little. I'll, definite, I'll admit that, uh, but I noticed that uh, uh, different media outlets are like giving us a count of how many players kneel before the game uh, and, and you know before they get into the before the kickoff mm -hmm. and I'm wondering how necessary that is uh, or if you know if they're overdoing it or you know are they calling these people out saying those are the guys we just yeah. named them for you so I'm I'm a little bit po you know well my thing on that is because that's getting down into the weeds and we're letting them do the story narrative and, mm -hmm. and because they're talking about protests. I want to get down to, to the larger issue because Pearl, our good resource person, Pearl Duncan said, Eric, these folks are trying to t control the narrative. Yeah. And so instead of talking about the bigger issue as a constitutional right being violated, which is their right to free speech, Absolutely. they want to make it into just a patriotic, right. patriotic battle. And, and, she, and, and her key point was, we need to control the storyline on what the issues are at stake. And I, keep, I, and I was saying to her, I always try to take the storyline back to the original protest grounding, which is why we opened our show with that mm -hmm. cold open, because of that kind of treatment. But she's right in that the larger issue of constitutional protections of the right to free speech is what's really at stake. And the brouhaha, which your president jumped into again, and Ray, we have to talk about calling for people to be fired, Jamel Hill, yes. right? Bob, you've been following Jamel Hill and her story because 
when Jerry Jones came out with whatever his new thing was, Jamel Hill actually said, well, maybe if he's going to go that route about demanding that his players stand for the national anthem, as opposed to when he was siding with them, uh, with the locked arm stuff, maybe since a lot of black people support the NFL, maybe the black people should think about not supporting the Cowboys or not right. supporting the Cowboys sponsors who buy time in Cowboys football games. And so as a result of that, Jamel Hill got suspended. She didn't get suspended for calling Trump a white supremacist and a racist, <laughs> which, which is, you know, the violation of their social media policy. ESPN, by the way, folks, Jamel Hill is one of the commentators for one of the main ESPN um, cable sports Yes, he's shows. one of their, uh, she's yeah, one of their, 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 one of their top anchors. Yes, their high profile anchors. And, and so, the, because it was the second violation of their social media uh, mm -hmm. online rules, the company said, well, okay, that's two, two strikes. You, you, you're going to be suspended. So our good friend, quote friend, the Reverend Al Sharpton, mm -hmm. jumped into that fray, just mm -hmm. like Donald Trump jumped in on one side. <laughs> the Reverend Sharpton jumped in on the other side. And so we might be calling for blacks to boycott ESPN for their arbitrary suspension right. of Jamel Hill. So now, what, what, what I want to do is compare the NFL bylaws, which you're good on, Ray, no, well, as, as opposed to uh, <laughs> the right to free speech, mm -hmm. right? And Bob, you had a similar thing that you, you if you want to recount it to our viewers, when you were a reporter, oh. when, let's, let, yeah, bring that up as a, as sure. a comparison sure. to, to what Jamel Hill may be going through, because right. it's a personal, I, thing yeah, that actually it, gets to the heart of this. Yeah, and, and Jamel was basically, uh, just by way of explanation, uh, uh, suspended for s allegedly impulsive tweets uh, on s her own social media uh, uh, platform, uh, uh, yeah. ID mm -hmm. on Twitter. It's her Not an ESPN account, her right, personal it, it's account. Her, she identifies you know, who she works for, but that's okay, it's her mm -hmm. account. Uh, but uh, getting back to what you just mentioned, uh, when I was a reporter in Milwaukee, uh, there came a moment where the net, where the newspaper guild uh, started uh, uh, trying to organize the staff because uh, we had a guild uh, years ago, uh, years before, but uh, the paper was not a union paper at that moment, and so there were there was sort of a, uh, sessions where we'd hear more about the union and uh, uh, how we could protect ourselves against what the we thought was unfair treatment by. By the, by the corporation. Mm -hmm. So anyway, in the middle of this, all of a sudden, the company distributes this new corporate-wide uh, code of ethics. Code of ethics mm -hmm. and or uh, social media yeah. guidelines. Yeah, uh, and similar. And okay, and mm -hmm. this you know this goes back before the days of social, social media, media, right? But <laughs> hidden within the code of ethics was a line that says, "And uh, employees shall not speak ill of the company either personally or privately." ESPN anchor Jamel Hill has on, been suspended any, from the network for. T Mary, on uh, uh, the Code of Ethics said that we, we couldn't speak ill of the company mm -hmm. at any time, either at public hearings or personally or in the paper, et cetera. And when we saw that, a couple of the reporters said, I'm not signing that Code of Ethics because, you know, Constitution gives me the right of free speech. And then uh, some other reporters said, oh, no, I'm not signing it. And eventually, we did not sign it. We had them take it out of the Code of Ethics. And uh, once we read it through and so, so that that line item was gone, then we had no problem mm -hmm. with it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, just this type of attempt through corporate codes to limit free speech because it Im impacts the brand. There you go. And uh, mm -hmm. I don't, uh, it bothers me because mm -hmm. I used to look at institutions like CBS, NBC, and ABC, et cetera, as institutions, but now they're brands. Mm. And they're trying hard not so much to protect the, the honor of the institution rather than just the value of the brand. And yeah. That's, that's what's yeah, killing me. Yeah. And, and I'm sure that's part of what ESPN is worried about because yeah. there's money to be had in the NFL. And so there's no two ways by it. Uh, uh, this article, Michael McMahon, he, he's a Sports Illustrated guy. Uh, and basically, 
He had a long take on examining the factors surrounding Jamel Hill's suspension by ESPN. And there are a couple of key paragraphs that, 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 that are crucial. Uh, First Amendment, Hill's employment contract, ESPN's workplace policies. Those are key things. He says, to be clear, Hill enjoys a First Amendment right to express political and social views without sanction by the government. Even if her tweets aggravate President Trump and other government officials, we live in a society where those views are insulated from prosecution. On the other hand, Hill's First Amendment right does not insulate her from sanction by her private sector employer. Okay. The capacity of ESPN to sanction Hill for engaging in commentary derives from a variety of legal documents, including her employment contract with ESPN. While Hill's employment contract is a private record, it most likely contains terms that obligate Hill to adhere to the company's social media policy and accompanying policies. Also, the contract almost certainly authorizes ESPN to suspend or fire Hill for conduct that brings ESPN into disrepute. Mm -hmm. And so that is the clause or the phrase that they will hinge her suspension on right. because you have violated our social policy and what you're saying is bringing us into disrepute. It's bringing them into financial disrepute, right. <laughs> okay? Exactly. And that is the disrepute that they seriously mm -hmm. don't want to have happen. Right. So, so yes, she's well within her rights to say that as a person with right. First Amendment rights, because she has a contract with a private entity, boom, she could be subject to yep. suspension. Okay. So, yeah, those are key things. But the, 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 the crucial issue that we still want to talk about is where do we come down on framing this discussion about the NFL players? Because the whole bit about their constitutional rights, their employee contracts, gets bogged down in the false patriotism narrative that mm -hmm. everybody's pushing. So you had a you had a take on that false patriotism no, I mean, thing, Ray, that you, see, you, you were know, talking I about. I, <laughs> false, I, I, I wouldn't necessarily call it false patriotism. There are people that only see. The, the, now I've I've spoken to people that I know that understand the protest and, and are a hundred percent behind it. But the first thing that they see is that the flag is being disrespected. The people are not standing for the flag, and that angers a lot of people. I sort of understand that, but of course, I mean, I'm, I'm on this side of the fence. I understand why he's protesting. I want him to protest. I, I, I support that. And I'm willing to disregard the disrespect for the flag. I stand for the flag. I, I always have. I always will. Uh, I think that for me personally, there would be another venue to protest in. But I think Colin... Uh, What's his Colin name? Kaepernick? Kaepernick. Yeah. Kaepernick. Yes. I applaud him. I, I absolutely mm -hmm. applaud him. I think that this could be done in a different venue, but the fact that he's brought national attention to it, I think, is the key thing here. So I, I forgive him not standing for the flag and the other players who are not standing for the flag. But Bob. there are people that can't get past that. Well, uh, I was reading an article, and I uh, wish I could remember who it was, and he talked about how this is, uh, how this, Universal respect for the flag has actually never been there. Uh, during NFL games, you'll hear people start cheering three quarters through the national anthem. They're already hooting and hollering. Yeah. And you know, uh, he oh. was talking about how some people wear the flag as a bandana, and uh, you know, yeah. I, I don't want to say blow their nose into a flag <laughs> handkerchief. They, that they don't do. Right. I mean, but they somebody, might, but somebody, we don't, we don't. yeah, <laughs> somebody else was 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 saying that. But yeah, uh, where this, you know. Patriot patriotic rush. I haven't, you know, I don't feel that. I stand up and I do say the mm -hmm. sing the national anthem. I definitely respect mm -hmm. this country and what it is. But his right to take a knee, yeah, he can do it. Absolutely. Well, you know, but there are people that are only going to see that, and that's the problem. Right exactly. Now. And Trump and his cronies are playing on that, and they're steering the. Uh, the dialogue in right. that direction. They're excellent at creating that single cartoon image instead of giving you the whole right. picture sure. picture with the history. Sure. Me me meanwhile, all of the fans at the concession stands waiting for their beer as well. The they're not, they not standing with their right. hand Absolutely. over their heart. So yeah. they know no, they're, they're not. They're, they're right. with two beers, <laughs> right. three bags of popcorn, and right. uh, five hot dogs trying to get back to their seat. You know. Right. Uh, you know, so it, and then they see the guy the kneeling down and they complain. Yeah, yeah, and I know, I know. 
Well, uh, there, there are a couple of yeah. things um, uh, that, one that I really want to talk about that you guys just drove out of my mind with that humorous <laughs> thing about the guys with the two beers. <laughs> but, but, but my, my mixed race grandson asked me about this issue because he was at a Yankee game when the, the national anthem was played. Mm -hmm. And he told me, I was, you know, thinking of sitting down, but I, I, I'm, you know, I, I, I wasn't sure what was, and I said, so I, I, I gave him the whole Colin Kaepernick issue about the fact that he'd had a long-term discussion with a veteran from Afghanistan. And the veteran said, I fought so that you could protest, uh, and so I respect that right, and mm -hmm. I actually understand why you're protesting, so I respect that right. Okay. And, and he said to Kaepernick in this letter, look, you know, here's what we do when we have foreign comrades. We take a knee. Take a knee, right. And mm -hmm. so he said to Kaepernick, if you want to respect the flag and respect what our service, don't sit, take a knee. And boom, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kaepernick said, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That gives me exactly what I need. That was the paraphrasing the exchange. Okay. And so instead of sitting, he took a knee. Took a knee. And so that was out of respect to fallen servicemen, out of respect to the service of living servicemen, and out of respect to the flag. And so all these people that are bad-mouthing him, so I, I, I conveyed that to my grandson. I said, but just because Kaepernick is doing what he's doing, I don't want you to do this because of him. I want you to think about these issues. Mm -hmm. And if you agree with him because you personally think that, then you take a knee or you do whatever, you raise a clenched fist, whatever. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, that's on you. That's your decision, but right. you don't do it for anybody else. And he, he said, Thanks, Randad, <laughs> and, yeah. and, uh, and I left it to him. To me, depending on where I was, what situation I was in, I'd take a knee because I don't have any problem protesting with Kaepernick the fact that black people are not being treated properly and are not give, being given, what is it called? Equal protection under the law. Mm -hmm. This is what the mm -hmm. laws mm -hmm. of the country yeah. talks about. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have a phrase for it. You fly the flag upside down when you are in distress, distress. okay? Mm -hmm. Black people, brown people are in serious distress in this country because of what these people are doing to us. Right. Casually and so, and, and, and nobody was actually discussing this kind of distress until right. Ka Kaepernick took his knee. Yeah. And I thank him for it. And white people out there, I want you to know, black and brown people, not just black and brown people, this nation is in distress because of the fact that you're not granting people equal protection under the law. And until you come to grips with that, I will support any NFL player, any NBA player, anybody who wants to use the platform to let you know that. And so that was an editorial statement. Okay. <laughs> now let's get back to assessment and analysis. There's one other story that we now run out of time because well, we really need to deal with it. We have uh, three minutes. Yeah, and we can't talk about the lack of response to Puerto Rico yes. as a uh. result of Hurricane Maria in three minutes, but we can at least send some targeted bullet points. Should, bullet points, notice, bullet points. Yes. Send some targeted yeah. bullet points yes. because whatever the Northern Command, North Army, Army North, whatever they are, are supposed to respond to disasters in whatever, you're failing at your job in Puerto Rico. Uh, maybe because they didn't send your commander down there or whatever, you're not doing your job. So I don't know. I don't want to get on a soap opera. You guys give me your assessment of what's going on in Puerto Rico. What about the waterborne diseases that they just discovered? Well, I mean, I'll just talk about infrastructure. I just can't believe, and I know the infrastructure was in bad shape to begin with, but to have like 20% or less of the island with power today as we tape, mm -hmm. after, and we're weeks into this, uh, unacceptable. Well, fe what's FEMA doing down there? They're not doing anything either, are they? They're not. The supplies aren't getting to people? There's a, there's uh, a, there was a big hospital ship, I think, that came in. but Did it actually land? I oh, yeah, I it got there last week, oh, the okay. USS Comfort. But can it land? Is it too uh, big no, to no, land? No, no, it's parked in the okay. harbor, okay? okay. okay. Now, this, uh, um, here I go again. I, okay. I, I was <laughs> channel surfing right <laughs> after I got back in town the other night, and it was MSNBC uh, changing the dial. I didn't fall asleep on the couch yet. And it was Rachel Maddow show. It wasn't O'Donnell or the pre he said, this ship got there a week ago, uh, maybe six or eight days after it should have gotten there. Right. 
Uh, it's got the capacity for something like 800 beds. It's got all kinds of doctors and nurses, all kinds of mm -hmm. facilities, et cetera. Uh, maybe there's six or seven patients being treated on the ship right now. Oh, man. Uh, so that was two days ago from, from really? today, Thursday. I, I, so yeah. whatever the logistics for why you can't get patients from where they are to that hospital ship, mm -hmm. that's a problem for me. Um, it's a big ocean. <laughs> yeah. There, there's, there's a, there's, there, there's some vehicle called the, the, what the hell was the vehicle called that, that it's at Kirkland Air Force Base that can put all kinds of communication stuff back together. Um, oh, there's all that? sorts of things. No, 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 this is a special vehicle. Okay. It's designed for, they actually did a training exercise in August. All mm -hmm. right. Right before these hurricanes hit and it was to respond in times of crisis and whatever uh, and it can take all kinds of disparate communication things and places that aren't done. They bring their hub in, and okay. it can bring them and let them all read the different things, and people can get connected. Okay. <laughs> okay. 40 seconds. 40 seconds. Yes. I don't know where that truck is. And maybe it's too big <laughs> to get it fit in the C5A and fly it in. Right. <laughs> but it's C not down in Puerto Rico. Where they need it. Exactly. <laughs> so mm -hmm. in any event, we need to revisit the response to Puerto Rico. And uh, But... Hey, this has been Media Watch. I'm your co-host, Eric Tate. I'm Bob Anthony. And I'm Raymond Peterson. And catch us on YouTube at? At Media Watch EVT. And folks, we'll catch you the next time.